So, Pontus, yeah. if, if it's good enough for Angelina Jordan when she makes the video, she has her little sister. I was thinking, if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. Why don't I introduce you to my little sister? This is Arlene. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, hi, Arlene. Hi, Pontus. <laughs> nice to oh, see you. Nice to see you, too. So what's the age difference between Alan and yourself? Five years. No, you must be much younger than me. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. I forgot to powder my nose before we started. So what shall we talk about? There's always Angelina Jordan. I Jordan. thought we were going to talk about... Really? Again? <laughs> Aren't we through with no, this? It's, it's, <laughs> what number is this? Are we it's, it's not again. It's 72? It's, it's, it's still, it's not again. Still. Okay. One still. of the things right. which comes up from you and so many other people is how do you uh, convert and introduce someone to Angelina Jordan? Because you and I and half the world may think she's the best thing since sliced bread, but the other half of the world sometimes need a little nudge and they need a little push. And so a lot of times we Angel fans are baffled. Like, how do you introduce and how do you convert someone? So today's video is going to be about the nature of my sister's conversion because I have seen it over time. And oh. if you will allow me to quote the Bible, the scales fell from her eyes and she had her revelation. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's really nice because I'm trying with my wife and the scales are firmly in place. You need yeah. to play her Angelina Jordan while she's asleep. So it penetrates her unconscious. <laughs> Okay. Hypnosis, isn't it? it is interesting that everything in, in arts is a matter of taste. Some people like uh, abstract art, some people can't stand it. But for me, listening to Angelina Jordan, I can't uh, fathom why anybody isn't just immediately blown away. <laughs> so it will be very interesting to hear your story, Arlene, of the journey. Angelina journey. Well, the one song that Angelina Jordan wrote is the one that really got me. That was... Arlene, you're doing this the wrong way. That's the... at the end. We have to start at the beginning, not the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, but I think that's okay. That's a nice revelation to have. I'm assuming you're talking about Million Miles. Well, yes. And that's a wonderful yeah. thing to have original song from her being the one song that really won you over. Oh, because definitely. we're talking about the end first, this, this is like reading the last page of a mystery novel to find out <laughs> who was a murderer. You, you, you can't read the last page first because <laughs> it's the wrong order. Some people okay. can. <laughs> Some people do. Are you going to introduce me to the music that I did not care for that yeah. much in the very yeah. beginning when I heard but her? E Are you going to play a few bars? Yeah, yes. but even before you were okay. introduced to that you were at a stage of Angelina who? Because I had heard her and I was already doing some videos and then you said, Angelina who? And so your stage was, right. Alan, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're so obsessed. You are obsessed. Yeah, I know, I know. That was my line to you. Yeah, the O word. <laughs> I've heard that too from my wife. So I, I know all about that. The obsession, yeah. And I think a lot of Angelina fans, they call themselves angels. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are borderline obsession. Obsession, that uh, word obsessed is only used by non-Angelina Jordan fans. Angelina Jordan fans call each other uh, either realistic or enthusiastic, but they don't call themselves obsessive. Seriously, sometimes I wonder myself, what am I doing? Is this really what I should be doing with my time? <laughs> and then I, I listen to one of her songs and I, I go, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like the world needs to know the feeling for me. And I know other uh, reactors have said the same thing, that they really want to spread the word. So that's basically what we're doing, right? Please allow me to give you a justification. You're not wasting your time. What you are doing <laughs> via Angelina Jordan is you are connecting deeper and more accurately to your emotional world. And that's a really True. very evolved and very sophisticated and advanced thing to do. 
And for that reason alone, being a, a, a serious Angelina Jordan fan is really worthwhile. It's been two years since uh, discovering Angelina. And so with time, you forget what was it like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it was like a revelation for me, like the emotional connection and, and also all the things that I've gained from my experience with her artistry. And, and so you, you should never forget that. But somehow with time, it, it falls back a little bit. Yeah. And but it's not on the top of my mind. She, she's like the gift that keeps on giving. Because if you go out and you have a few beers and you feel a bit jolly, so that three days later you can go out and have three beers again and feel jolly again. So it, it doesn't wear off and it, it doesn't lessen the impact. But let's uh, find out how Orlean started her Angelina Jordan journey, shall we? What was the introduction? Was it Alan's videos that sort of was the first contact? Alan introduced me. Yes, he did. He told me to listen to Angelina. He asked me to listen to her, introduced her through letting me know that she won Norway's Got Talent. So I did get to see those videos. And you weren't hooked at once. I was not hooked in the beginning. The earlier videos, when I saw those, I was not hooked. Later on, I became hooked. The, the best thing to do to illustrate is to go yeah. through the different categories with Arlene and you can t talk about your re reaction as you hear each of the songs and you can make appropriate faces. By the way, Pontus, um, my sister yeah. and I have a joke and that is I make videos for her and then I happen to share with the rest of the world afterwards. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Let's start with the category of the ones that she doesn't like. And then we can gradually increase the crescendo. So we'll start with the two that she doesn't like, and you can just spontaneous and, and say why you don't like it. So we're going to listen to some clips that you really don't like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's roll. Did you like that one, Arlene? Not particularly. <laughs> and the reason being is because I'm not a big fan of Amy Winehouse. There's something about that type of voice, sound, it's not pleasing to my ear. Okay, the raspiness or what it's is not it? raspiness, it's just the tone that I just don't care for it. What, what we said in the beginning, it's a matter of taste. I, I get that. Uh, what do you say, Alan? Are you happy with that answer? Yeah, it's her answer. Uh, you know, it's not for me to say it's the wrong answer. It's, it's very subjective. I'm just curious because if I try to convince somebody that hasn't listened to Angelina, mm -hmm. there's a, a few ways to go about doing that. One is to select the song that I think is the one that's going to make the most impact. And I wouldn't naturally turn to Back to Black for that reason. Right. But of course, there's always another way to do it because she has around 160 songs uh, that she has recorded. So you could turn over a list and say, what do you like on this list? What mm -hmm. songs do you like? And listen to Angelina covering those songs. And that might be better. Do you think that will be the best choice to do it? That makes a lot of sense, but particularly if which songs really move you, that would be the one that you would suggest for someone to listen to. So you have another one in the same category, Don't Like. Should we hear that one too? Sure. This is a man's world. She can really belt it out. Let's put it that way. Maybe I have a problem with her using the word woman when she's still a girl. Maybe it's somehow that affects me. But there's something about her tone in that song. I think it's excellent, but it's not something I'd want to listen to. 
too often. I know the talent is there and it can impress me, but it's not something I'd want to listen to. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Of course, if you have a list of 160 songs, there are songs that you don't particularly like. Right. Uh, regardless of who sings it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to separate the, the talent from what you like listening to, really. And that is what the principal is doing now with this one, isn't it? You can see the talent, but you're mm -hmm. not so keen on the song. Do the song, I think it's just her version of it. I wouldn't want to listen to it again and again. It's not something that would be on my list of things to listen to. A, a lot of yeah. people say just the opposite that when they hear a song that they normally don't like, when they hear Angelina sing it, then they like it. This is just one song that I don't care for. <laughs> I, I must say to you, Pontus, growing up, my sister was always very fussy. She would never <laughs> eat pickles or olives. She was always very fussy. So you have to bear that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> we always get back to food, don't we? <laughs> Taste. Three times a day. Yeah, Three times a yes. day. Yeah. So when on your journey did you listen to these songs that fell into the category you don't like? Was it in, in the beginning and, and you went along with Alan and okay, I can listen to a couple more, but I, I'm not sure this is for me. That's a very good question. I don't think that I listened to her that much in the very beginning. I think that these songs were introduced to me later yeah. on. So. I don't think that if we try and inject chronology, that it will make this whole together more. I think we just have to f focus on the categories as opposed to the chronology. Let's move on to next category, and that is the just okay category. Mm -hmm. Every time we say goodbye. I think it's okay. I think maybe because the slowness of the song itself, because again, I hear her talent and I'm beginning to listen to it again and again and like it more and more. But I think it's initially hearing that song is just too slow for the likes of me. Okay, I can see that. She does some of the songs that she arranges herself very slow. And also in this category, Just Okay is Diamonds Are Forever. Let's uh, have a listen to that one. Diamonds are forever. They are all I need to breathe. They can stimulate and tease me. It just didn't do anything for me, but when I hear it again, I start to like it more. Maybe because I'm already influenced by how much I'm liking her. So yeah. it's hard to go back. Yeah, that was a little thing that I was hinting on earlier, that maybe songs that you don't like from the get-go becomes something more when you've experienced more of Angelina's artistry. And I'm also curious about how much of Angelina's person that influences how much you like her music because she's caring and a role model. But it's interesting to have that coming together of the person and personality artistry. Because in some cases, I think the personality shows or gets transmitted through the artistry. And I think that goes with paintings as well. In some way, that, that must be some kind of connection, like a holistic approach to artistry. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next category. And now we're getting somewhere. Now, this category is called, this is really good. <laughs> so in the, this is really good category, one of my favorites, it's originally called Mr. Lonely, but she sings it Miss Lonely. Okay which I actually think works better in the song, which is nice. Let's have a listen to that one. That is impressive. 
I like that song. And I also remember the original Mr. Lonely. But the way she does it and the way she changes her tone and the level, it's beautiful. Yeah. Listen My sister and I have a few it. things in common. And mm -hmm. one of that is we're both um, really influenced by the mid 60s music. And it's when we were growing into music. And this is Bobby Vinton, and we both know the song really well. Bobby Vinton. Something else I must tell you, yeah. Pontus, my sister Arlene is famous in the family that if you're in the middle of a conversation and two words remind her of a song, she will interrupt you and start singing that song. And this is what my sister is oh, famous really? for. Maybe we could have some example tonight. <laughs> some spontaneous singing. Yeah, Arlene, Arlene sure. you talk too much. <laughs> You talk too much, you worry me to death, you just talk. See, that's what we're talking much. about, Pontus. Oh, really? That's excellent. It's, it's a real conversation stopper. You talk about people that you never know. <laughs> that's nice. Okay. I don't know where I should go from this, but okay. Let's just carry on. The next song in the same category, this is really good. It's a cover of a song, Young and Beautiful, by Lana Del Rey. Did yeah. you know the original? Yeah. I, I, I never heard of Lana Del Rey before uh, Angelina. You, you should uh, get out either. more. Uh, let's listen. Diamonds pretty and violet now Summer nights, it's July When you're alive, I'm forever Days, city lies, the way you play with me like a child. Will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? It's a song I can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is very emotional. She's just singing it like she feels it. And I can relate to that. She makes her she voice so beautiful. rich for that song. If you listen to the original, it's almost mm -hmm. like the difference between uh, mm -hmm. stereo and mono. It's the difference between having uh, two speakers and one speaker. The original just sounds one dimensional, but she gives us a certain type of volume to it. It doesn't mean loud. Her sound is so broad with it. It's incredible what she can do with her voice, really. So uh, now we're getting close to the revelation part. Just to recap your sort of journey with Angelina at this point, you're in, in this is really good category now. Right. And uh, although this is, is not like a chronological journey, but there are a couple of stops here and there on the way. Some songs are not doing it for you and some songs are really good but i'm just imagining now how it works maybe this is just not for you how, how it works for you but is it like you're you're getting a feel for it and therefore you're more and more yeah let's say open i was going to say i'm very open-minded and i'm very open to listening to different artists and if i hear something i like i'll listen to it over and over again so until that moment, until that point, I'm becoming a fan, but I'm still have to give it time to brew and wait until it really moves me. So this is something that I begin to really like her, but it hasn't changed me. It hasn't made me the big fan that I feel like I am now. Yeah. Let's listen to one of the songs that sort of was, I think, was a key to your becoming a fan because this mm -hmm. is in the category, Oh My God. <laughs> Anywhere the wind blows, it doesn't really matter to me, to So that when I listen to that, and I could listen to that over and over again, it does give me chills. And it also, when I'm listening to it, I wish I didn't have to hear the comments 
and the audience, you know, getting excited. I wish I could just hear us singing with nothing else. And because that particular song is something that I would recommend to anyone for them to become an angel fan, yeah. an angel follower, because that, do, that does something. It yeah. just moves me and the tone and the feeling and the, it's just the total package. Uh, do, do you feel that the uh, visual is also important for you to feel like that? Or is it just the audio? I think the visual is important. It's also when she gets into it and, and the feelings are there and to watch her and her expression and how she's mm -hmm. getting into it and the way her voice just changes over this song. That to me is amazing. Yeah, I must have heard this easily over a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And still when it comes up now, I get emotional. That's unheard of. <laughs> uh, next up is her original Million Miles in the Oh My God category. And uh, was this the first original song from her that you heard? That you were aware of that was her or yes. original? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's uh, listen to a short clip here. When I was a child, I walked the streets, they see me growing up, know you were all I need. I seem in myself through all the years, it's like it's in my tears. I know what she's singing about and she lost her grandfather and the expression and the song itself, the meaning to her, and it has meaning to me also because then I think of my uncle who I lost and I listened to it the other day and I was crying because it just, I felt it and it's very special. And the fact that she wrote it is also incredible at such a young age. This is one of the more important songs, I think, because it, it releases a chemical uh, reaction. A catalyst? Yes, the yes, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah it got the voice. Yes. Uh, we've been together now for so long, Alan, that we're acting like uh, husband and wife. So you can fill in yeah. when I... You're having a bromance. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Bromance. If, if we were really that close together, I would have said the word in Swedish, Pontus. Yeah. Next, Next time, time. <laughs> do it in Sweden. I feel this song is like an important song because it's like acting like a catalyst for people that have just had or maybe it's like years since a loss of some kind and then they can mourn they can begin their grieving period the yes. memories come back yeah. and they resurface and it's just a reminder of the loss so yes. whenever it was it's just the words of the song and the way she sings is so beautiful yeah so. because i know we've had an interview with one person who had a loss and he was not coping very well with the grieving he was holding it all inside mm -hmm. and it wasn't until he heard this song that he could start mm -hmm. crying for his father who mm -hmm. passed away and that is so important yeah. for us oh. to do that and that i think is one of the major things that angelina to help us become a better person is to get more in touch with our feelings and be more open to being emotional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's uh, so yeah, important. I, yeah, I don't think that can be underestimated. Well, it's the whole reason we started up this podcast to talk about that and to spotlight that. Uh, I can't think of anything more important yeah. than emotional and spiritual evolution. It's right up there. This yeah, is really yeah. great, Arlie, because you go from songs that you don't like and through a progression and now you become officially, you become a crier. You, you, you get an Angelina Jordan badge when you become a crier. <laughs> yes. Next, I'll be getting a ticket to her concert in Norway. I'll let her That's know to send up. you one, okay? Go you ahead, have one Adam. more song that you chose. And what is the category after Oh My God? Wow, I have to think of the category now. Uplifting. Okay. Beyond. I, I know the category. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Way to go. Good one. <laughs> up, up, okay. and away. Okay. okay, let's listen to the one you've chosen for the category uplifting. But when you cry, you bring on the rain, so stop your sign. Won't you be happy again? Keep on smiling. It's when you smile. It's 
it's the message. It's the meaning. I used to do laughter yoga and I used to be teaching it. And I know, for instance, that the emotions are contagious. So if you start to laugh for no reason, someone else can laugh with you, not at you. That's a great way to end this journey, I think, with the laughter. I think I, I know Angelina has a great sense of humor. You can see that in her videos on her grandmother's channel. I haven't As, seen uh, that. I just signed on to Instagram and I have seen some of her TikTok videos mm -hmm. through Instagram. She, she posts a lot of pictures. Her eyes change from brown to blue. Do we have any final words to say? to Arlene, Alan, before we uh, sign off. Yeah, when we have you back next time, Arlene, we want you to have more categories. We want to find out what the category is beyond infinity, because, because that's the question <laughs> on everyone's mind. What, what's beyond infinity? Out of space. Thank you, Lini. You did very well. I won't have to edit out any stuttering. That's good. I hope I didn't interrupt anyone. Pontus, do you have any questions? I feel so fortunate to get to know you a little bit, Arlene, and I'm wondering if there's any more relatives that are going to show up in our, our next episodes, in our coming I think, episodes. I think Athena would be great. <laughs> your daughter? It's, yeah, my daughter. Where, where is she on the journey then? She's about 10 years behind Arlene. Okay. I, just, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I know that it, it was a hard act to follow after you had your last YouTube podcast True. Yeah. with True. Yeah, you liked him, did you? Oh, tremendous. Yeah. He's from the yeah. hood. He speaks my kind of language. No, I don't. That's my Italian again coming in. <coughs> the, the next guest we're going to interview, Pont, is my dog. He really likes Angelina Jordan, and he barks along when she's singing. <laughs> And so we can ask him whether the number of barks is in proportion to how much he likes. <laughs> That's great. My dog would make a great um, interviewer, interviewee. Interviewee. Oh. Yeah, maybe interviewer also. Your dog would be better than the two of us. He's very smart. He's very smart. Send me a video of you dancing Send, with a dog. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Arlene, for this. It was very interesting to get a glimpse of somebody's Angelina Jordan journey. And uh, also from the perspective of not being the one that gets immediately just blown away. Rather, the slow process. It was a slow process and yeah. it's my pleasure to be able to share my version of how I see Angelina.